Hi everyone, Brandon Mena here, and I want to show you tonight how to tie the slider bugger. Um, this is going to be the uh, olive and ginger coloration. That's my favorite coloration to fish. It's a good sculpin coloration in my opinion, so it tends to be the one I reach for the most. For a hook, I have a Daiichi 2461 in the vise. This is a size 2, and then for thread, I just have some Danville 140. I'm going to start that on the hook. So for this pattern, you're going to need some large size lead dumbbell eyes. I like these orange ones quite a bit. These are the double pupils, super durable, really heavy, which is what I'm going for with this uh, big deer hair head this is going to have on it. I like to throw a little bit of super glue on that thread base and then use that to kind of help me lock in these eyes a bit. And just use a couple of X wraps to lock that in. Make sure those are lined up where I want them. Throw a couple wraps around the base of the eyes just to further lock those in. And then a little dab of glue on top of that as well. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is. You see the front edge of the dumbbell eyes here. I try to get that fairly close to the back edge of the hook eye. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I find that to be a good uh, point of reference to allow for enough room to be able to tie on tip it when you put on that deer hair head. Okay. So like I said earlier, we're tying the olive and ginger uh, version. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some Sculpin Olive Marabou here. And I like to strip the marabou off of the stem when I tie it in. And then this one, I like to have a little bit longer tail on it. So uh, most of the time with streamer patterns, people are shooting for about, you know, one hook length for the tail. I like to go a little bit longer than that, probably about one and a half. On my vise, I find that if I go right to about the elbow on it, it seems to be about the length I'm looking for. I'm going to need a little bit more marabou than that, so we're going to strip some more off the stem from the other side. Then we'll take the ginger color, and I like to use a little bit less ginger then I did the olive color. Again, I'm just stripping that off the stem. And then I will use that olive for length. And just stack those. With those dumbbells being on top of the hook, I'm sure many of you know, but that's going to cause this to right hook point up. So that ginger is actually my belly color for this uh, little sculpin pattern. I'm just throwing some thread over that marabou. Not the cleanest uh, marabou tie-in job, but it'll get the job done. Next, I'm going to tie in my counter rib. It's going to be some 5X tippet. I really like to use tippet for the counter ribs on most of my flies. I just find it to be actually surprisingly more durable than wire in most cases. Okay. Then I'll just throw that in my material clip. I'm just going to moisten those fibers a little bit to keep them out of my way. For the body, I'm going to go ahead and use some brown olive ice dub. This is one of my favorite colors of ice dub to use. It's just super fishy color. And I'm just going to go ahead and dub that on in a kind of like a chunky noodle. You could also throw a dubbing loop if you wanted to. Um, I don't feel that the durability is needed at that point just because you have a, some hack on the counter of going through it. But some would argue it's uh, even faster than doing a big loop like this, big old noodle like this. So whichever you prefer is fine with me. Just need a little bit more on there. And then we 
just need to leave a little bit of space behind those eyes there. So I have a black barred olive uh, piece of hackle here, and this is a ginger one. And then I like to stack these on top of each other and try to move the fibers till I get to the point where the hackles are pretty, pretty close to the same size. Uh, I'm sure the fish don't care, but if I, I tend to like to have the olive one, if anything, be a little bit longer than the ginger one. And I've left those little stubbies in there, as you can see, just something for that thread to bite into. Hopefully you can see that okay. All right, so I'll take my hackle pliers now. This hackle is probably long enough I could get away without hackle pliers, but I'll show you here in a second kind of why I like to have them. So we'll throw one wrap right there at the beginning and one right behind it. So kind of two close wraps there. And then we'll just palmer that back and open spirals. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a bulky hackle. I really do like that. Adds a lot of bulk in the water without adding a lot of casting weight. And then I'll use my counter rib there to grab a couple of tight wraps on there right where that hackle is. And again, this is why I like the hackle pliers. It provides me a little bit of weight so I could use both hands to capture this hackle in. And I'm just gonna work that, uh, tip it through that hackle to lock it in. You can see these uh, hackle fibers are pretty webby, so they're gonna be a little bit messy or a lot messy until I uh, get this tied off and I'll throw some I'll brush that those fibers out a bit. And I like to make sure that I double that, tip it over a couple times and really lock it in. That tip, it can be a little slick sometimes. Then I'll just go ahead and grab my scissors and cut out the butts of that hackle or tips, I guess in this case. And then I'll take a little Velcro brush and I'll just brush all that, those fibers out. And also loosen up some of that dubbing that's underneath that hackle. Okay, so let's go ahead and tie in some rubber legs now. You can use any uh, kind of brown or root beer colored legs that you like. These just happen to be some root beer silly legs. And I'll V tie those in, uh, one per side. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish. Forgot my whip finish tool, but I tend to I prefer to use a tool than a hand whip finish there, but should do fine. And then I'll take those legs and I like to trim them uh, short of the tail. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hair clip and I'm going to sweep everything back and hold it back with the clip for the deer hair work here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to GSP now. I like using GSP just for the deer hair work on most of my streamer patterns. Um, I, I really do like having a wax thread for the body work. Just like the way it locks in materials and dubs and things like that. But if you wanna use GSP for the whole fly, that would work too, for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little dot of super glue and place that right on top of the eyes. Kind of lock in that GSP and that Danville together. And then I have some olive uh, deer body hair here. You can also use belly hair if you like it. I think the trick is just finding a, 
a nice patch with some good tips because the tips, as you're going to see here, are pretty important to how the pattern looks. And this is a pretty healthy little clump here. And then what I'm going to do is I want to have the length of that be right about to the uh, hook point. So those tips are going to go to the hook point. I keep seeing broken tips every time I line it up, so I have to rip them out. Okay, so we got that lined up. I'm going to do a loose thread wrap to kind of gather that. And then another one, just slightly tighter to start to kind of save my work there a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingers to kind of hold that deer hair in place and pull straight down. That way it doesn't wrap around the hook too much. Okay, so we've cinched that down. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple wraps just around the base of the eyes to kind of lock in that clump of hair. Like such. You can kind of see how that's uh, kind of blank there at the bottom. And then what I like to do to cover that up is just use a little bit of bruiser blend dubbing. Just because I like the, the butter belly color a lot. I think it matches my belly color that I'm going for in this pattern, having that ginger belly with the ginger marigou tail. So I'm just going to stack a little clump of this, like such. And then I'm going to go ahead and capture that with the thread, almost like I'm V-tying it. And then this might be a little hard to see, but I'm going to pull that straight in front of those eyes. So you can see how that gets locked there. And then pull the bruiser blend back and capture it around the back edge of it. And then I'll do one more lap around those the base of those eyes just to lock everything in. And now I'm going to take some super glue and I'm going to dab some super glue right on that dubbing and up against the uh, base of the hook eye there. A wet finish would probably be a little bit more durable, but I haven't had any issues just finishing this off with super glue there. We'll go ahead and cut that out. All right, so now the next step is to trim that head. I have a razor blade here. What I tend to like to do is use one, one, uh, one side of the razor blade per per, per uh, fly, I guess. So they're labeled, they have a one and a two on them, so I've already used the one, so I'm gonna make sure I use the two on this one, so I have a sharp blade. Grab a little catch bin here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bend that into a moon shape. Have, and then I'm going to find my hook eye there. I'm gonna use that kind of as a guide, along with the dumbbell eyes. making a sweeping motion there. And I kind of do a big broad cut first, just to kind of get my bearings. And then I'll start to trim it up a little bit nicer, a little bit tighter to that collar. You notice that I left that uh, little hair clip in. I do like leaving that in because when I don't, sometimes I nick the rubber legs with the razor blade and that can be frustrating. So now one thing that um, you have to be careful with on this pattern is you want to make sure that you don't have the head be too tall on here or it'll impede the hook gap. Um, I have never had any issues with hook gap up with this hook on this pattern, but uh, I do make sure that the head is not too tall there. Then I'm just going to make sure I clean out all those little butts there and I just like to kind of push and mold that head a little bit and then I'll take that razor blade which is probably why this is probably why I only get one fly per side of a razor blade and that's because I'm going to go ahead and run right along that hook eye and clear out a spot for me to tie in some tippet. All right, let's go ahead and remove our hair clip here. 
So you can see we got a nice ginger belly with the olive top profile here. Two tone flies always seem to be the winners for me. Um, and again, that's our slider bugger. Thanks so much.